Welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. And, That's good. Uh, right then. Yeah. Go, it's you, it's you, lead. you lead. I'll oh, shut up. I'll leave you in because I'm going to ask you the first question. So we have to kind of work out before we come on air, folks, who's going to do what. But we don't do much planning, you know. We don't go like um, we're not Jeremy Carr. We don't do we don't spend the morning the whole morning planning these things. We just do them. But so red lights rolling. I'm going to introduce Pete uh, this morning, and uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, it's one of his favourite subjects, and I, I, you know. Th- I'm out off to 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 uh, to Pete. He certainly knows his onions when it comes to uh, marketing. So, what 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 are we going to talk about in terms of marketing, then, Pete? I think um, one. I think one of my bugbears, and I think I know it grips your grip, mm. grip, uh, grinds your gears, shall we yes. say, rather than yeah. grips. Your sh- I, I tend to say it grips my shit, um, but um, yeah, it causes a little bit of friction. I I think. Uh, in the industry, we can be very, uh, we lack some responsibility around how we market our services and products. And I think it's very important to ensure that we offer clarity in in, in what we say or the claims we make. Um, you know, I, um, I make some bold claims occasionally, but I never make claims that I don't feel that are, uh, are relevant or that we can't, that we can't back up. So, um, this came to life originally, Mike. You put a message in about being DVSA compliant. Someone had advertised themselves as DVSA compliant, and I think what's in one of the things that's very interesting is uh, flagship, for example, and my, and and myself as part of flagship, we are an authorised audit provider by the DVSA, not approved, authorised. And I think often the terminology we use. Uh, you know, JALPS, for example, you could never say, yeah. um, you know, you were authorised by JALPS to carry out driver CPC training. Um, we have to be very careful about the use of approved or accredited um, because they, they they all have slightly different meanings. So there's there's a bit around the, the wording in which people use. And I think sometimes um, whether it be the company owners or whether it be their marketing departments, often they use these things interchangeably, um, you know, Office of the Traffic Commissioner approved audits. I've seen. And I just think, really, you approved know, approved by the Traffic Commissioner. I've even seen that approved by yeah. the Traffic Commissioner. I absolutely yeah. one million percent can guarantee you that a Traffic Commissioner is never going to approve a commercial product or service in a no, million absolutely. years. And but that that then raises another challenge for me because I, I do personally get frustrated. And Mr. Turf, if you ever do listen to uh, our podcast, our little podcast, uh, which I'd I'd love I'd love you love to, to do. Think he does. Love, yeah, yeah, and we'd love to have you on if you wanted to come and have a chat. That'd be fantastic too. Um, but one of the things that I find frustrating is that the um, the letters uh, that request an audit from the OTC will say RHA Logistics UK or another equivalent independent body or, yeah. or words to those extent but the only two companies named are the rha and logistics uk i find that a little bit frustrating because i think yeah why, why, why do they get a cut above the rest of us you know we're, we're all trying to sort of do I'm, the best so i'm guessing it's because they loosely they loosely hold the term of a trade association rather than a business yes. but yeah you know the, how, how there's a fine line isn't there between oh. there's something I would be much happier. I would be much happier. Do you know what? I'd be much happier. And I think you're absolutely right. And sorry to cut you off there, mate. Sorry about that. But I wanted to just say, because it came into my head and I thought, do you know what? That's right. Yeah, yeah. In the future, I hope they start putting, we have a range of DVSA approved, uh, sorry, look at me, yeah. DVSA authorised audit providers for the yes. end recognition scheme, yeah. Yeah. Um, for which we recognise and therefore we recognise the, the end recognition scheme. And therefore, it'd be great if you used one of their audit providers. One of their audit <laughs> providers, yeah. Boom, because, you know, and that yeah, puts us all I mean, on the level playing field. Uh, you know, um, w- w- without the risk, uh, we know we're, we're we're very close to one of those particular um, trade associations. So you know, I'm not, not going to say anything uh, detrimental, 
Um, but, you know, there is a fine line between what's a trade association, what's like a commercial body that sells products and services, uh, which which all of the trade associations sell products and services. Um, you know, there may well be trade associations, but they're still active in the commercial world. Uh, and they've, they've obviously got that commercial. They've got an advantage in that commercial world uh, because they're a trade association and the traffic commissioner keeps quoting them. Um, but, you know, we're equal. You know, everyone's Sorry. got a fair crack at it. Have. Sorry, mate. I'm quite passionate about this. There's still, yeah, he likes people, this stuff. <laughs> there's still senior people in those organisations who get paid a significant salary. Yeah, yeah. They're, Off they're, the they're, back of the recommendations that are made, they they should really be. Yeah, yeah. They should really be honest in terms of that they are a trade association. However, you know they have a very very successful uh, and and rightly so. You know, right, absolutely right. So I mean. One in particular I know has been going for 130 odd years. So, you know, they quite rightly have that position, um, you know, that, that position at the top table. But, you know, let's give give us give us give everybody else a, a fair crack at the whip. But in, what about in terms of people, in terms of I won't say our competitors, but when um, you know, we try to be, I think, honest, uh, and, and it's difficult when you're selling a product, you know, if you're selling a uh, if you're selling a car, um, you know, for example, you wouldn't sort of sell it by pointing out it's bad bits <laughs> you know you'd, you'd 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 paint it in a glowing picture so that's marketing isn't it you're you're making the you're making your product stand out by by, by emphasizing its good points so what what sort of in marketing then where, where does dishonesty when's where's overselling something rather than dishonesty i would say yeah was that would yeah, that be a fair yeah, absolutely. So I, I've got I've got a post here from a from a company. I shan't mention them, but I I commented on it. So if people look at my LinkedIn history, they'll probably find it. Uh, I got a, I, I pointed this out to Pete in the week, and <laughs> the next Mike text, I this. thought he's not going to be able to resist posting on this. And like t- ten minutes no. later, I get sort of a WhatsApp. Hold my beer, <laughs> and he's off absolutely. posting. And I think ah oh, right. <laughs> so. This post is, it's highly recommended, highly recommended that operators engage with an independent third party to carry out an audit on their maintenance and O-license systems every two years. Contact us today about how our comprehensive audit can help you ensure your compliance. Blah, 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 giving you peace of mind that you have robust systems and procedures in place to comply with current legislation and best practice and an opportunity to rectify any issues before the DVSA carry out an audit on your maintenance systems. For your information, call us, blah, blah, blah. I, for which, commented on it. I commented, this is interesting. Who recommends this and where is it recommended? Question mark. Be interested to see as not come across that written anywhere before. So uh, since then, I've had the company direct to look at my profile several times, but not a response as yet. Ah, right. Okay. I wondered if you had a response, but <laughs> good old, um, good old LinkedIn. Good old LinkedIn. It tells you yeah, when people have looked at yeah, your profile, you, doesn't it? You can't stalk people on LinkedIn, can you? Not without blowing your cover. But no. Um, well, unless you pay, unless you pay. So I don't know if you know, but if you're if you're a LinkedIn Premium member, uh, so here's a little link, LinkedIn fact: you can change. You are able to change the settings, so you yeah. can say it'll it'll come up with. A director in the transport industry has looked yes. at your profile or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah, you can um, you can pay to hide. <laughs> pay to hide. Yeah. 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 Interesting thing about that post. They also a, a part of that post was a big picture of, or they used a big picture of the guy to maintain in roadworthiness. So um, mm-hmm. I thought, well, I do kind of know that publication reasonably well. I work, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of, you know, it's one of the the main tenants of transport manager uh, examine um examining um and i'm thinking to myself do you know what unless i've missed it there ain't nothing in the guide to maintaining roadworthiness that mentions that but they put a picture of the guide to maintaining roadworthiness on so what what's going on here um i don't disagree with the sentiment I, what they're I'm saying not, is, i'm is not challenging it i'm not true don't disagree no, no. But why weren't they just honest and said, we recommend? What? Yes. Why not do that? Because exactly. we would. We'd exactly. say, we recommend you do this. And exactly. we can back that up. You know, we can back that up. But not by threatening people with, you know, oh, because the law says and the DBSA are going to be chasing you. We can recommend, we can be honest about it and say, we recommend you do this. There's a number of reasons why you should do it. But ultimately, it's not about the DBSA catching you and 
and uh, giving you a wrap across the knuckles. It's about doing the right thing. Uh, and yeah. this is the right way to do the right thing. That's the, for me, that was the, the change. They needed to change one word and I would have been all over that. I would have been absolutely in 100% agreement. The sentiment, yes, operators should do that. And we would certainly help operators do that. You know, we would jump at the chance. We would be delighted to help operators do that. But, you know, it is highly recommended, suggesting that, you know, that Guide to Maintaining Roadworthiness, the DVSA have recommended it, Traffic Commission exactly. has recommended it. Why just not be honest and say, we recommend it and stand by what they what they do? That's what Absolutely. really, really annoyed me about that post. There's been yeah, a couple of others, aren't there, as well? There's been a couple of others. <laughs> We're after you, you know. Hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. Flagship Partners offer a range of consultancy and training services to ensure that our customers remain compliant and have the best possible knowledge to be able to fulfil their work. If you're interested in support with any of our safety, HR or compliance services, or you want to train to be a transport manager or need driver CPC training, give us a call today. Yeah, do you know what we should we should do like a little uh, guest slot each time or something like that to um, you know pick up pick pick out the people who are being uh, being uh, a little bit bendy of the truth. It's on not their, so uh, it, is, it is genuinely trying to uh, uh, too much in this. We've got to clean the industry up. The clean industry clean, needs yeah, cleaning up. Yeah, it needs cleaning up. Goes on. And you know when people come on courses, I want people to say, "I've come on this course because you." You lot are, you know, honest. Uh, you, you you tell it as it is. Um, you know, we've we've always prided ourselves on that. No BS, no fluff. Um, you're not just trying to use the big bad wolf. You know, and and I know lots of people. We, we, we've done some stuff on health and safety recently with some some really sort of I would say to me young blood uh, who have a different attitude to what we probably in my generation was built brought up with health and safety using big scare tactics you know and um and, and the kind of vocabulary that we use and i think it's time this we change the vocabulary in the industry away from um oh you've got to do this otherwise the big bad dvsa are going to come knocking at your door and stuff like that you know it's it's time we used a different language and said you know we do it because it's the right thing to do to keep everybody safe not because mm -hmm. we're just trying to keep the dvsa from the door uh, but yes, I'll, I'll give. So sorry, give you. I'm getting excited now. Like, um, but it's another uh, another a couple of examples that I pulled out of um, social media. Uh, one uh, was um, says that um, a transport manager, if you uh, if you pass your transport manager exam, it is internationally recognised. Um, the bad news is, since Brexit, if you passed your the transport manager exam in the uk it isn't internationally recognized anymore so oh, I, it, I i don't i haven't seen that one yeah oh, oh yeah awful it isn't internationally recognized um you know my, my challenge to that particular advert it may be that their advert or their text hasn't been reviewed in a while um, maybe you know they haven't picked up on the fact that if you pass your transport manager exam in the UK today, um, it wouldn't be accepted, for example, in the Republic of Ireland or in Spain or in, um, you know, only in the country of origin. Um, you know, suddenly maybe oh, only I've to... just seen that. I've just seen it. it. I've seen your WhatsApp to me on it. It's the same company that done the bloody hundred thousand pound. Yeah, still, yeah. Still so, accredited exam. Jesus. Again, let's you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. They might not have looked at that copy for a little while. It might be old copy uh, that they just regurgitate, but. If I was, let's say, for example, if I was not, if I didn't originate in the UK, maybe I'd, I was working in the UK uh, from somewhere else and I'd seen that advert and I thought, great, if I get my qualification with these people, it, when I go, if I go home, if I go back to my own country or if I decide I want to move to Spain or Republic of wherever, it's great because this qualification will get me uh, through that. Um, not true. Not true anymore, um, sadly. Um I saw another one, and and these people, these people, um, the, uh, who I saw this, it's in the bus world, to be fair. But uh, I re I highly respect these people, uh, and and they put an advert out, and it said, um, uh, "You must, you must get your minibus uh, inspected by an independent engineer 
every 10 weeks. That's news to me. I mean, I'm, I totally agree. In fact, 10 weeks, why not six weeks? I totally agree with the sentiment. But where did they get you must from? You know, you must is, is, is different to you should or it is good practice or it is best practice or in the interest of safety. But you must suggest that if I don't buy this product or service, then I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, and, and I think that's slightly dishonest, it, it, And even though I really respect the people where this information come from. So um, just be careful out there, folks. You know, it's absolutely we're not, you know, it, 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 the sentiment is, 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 is there. You know, we, people should be doing these things. But just be got to be careful of using authority and using the law as a way of beating people over the head um, and trying to get business. Um, just be honest. I think that's how we would do it. Pete, I think Absolutely. Do you know what? Whilst you've been talking, I've been um, I've been doing my little bit of research because it resonated with me, this whole subject, and it's one of Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Yeah. Have you read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules yes. for Life? It's a great book. I highly yes. recommend it. He, he's a little bit of a controversial character for people listening, if you've not yeah. come across Jordan Peterson. But he's a Canadian, I think he's a psychiatrist. I'm not sure if he's a psychiatrist or psychologist. But he, he I, I, he's, yeah, he's definitely a psychiatrist. He's a lecturer. He's a lecturer, so he's definitely a psychiatrist. And um, he is um, absolutely, I, I find him fascinating. I find his books fascinating. And uh, yeah, 12 Rules for Life, go away and Google it. But rule number 10, be precise in your speech. And I remember when I listened to listen to it, it says about making sure that you choose your words effectively and correctly. And he said, and in any case, make sure you don't lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because so, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you get, you, you, yeah, you get found out. And as I say, these, these people that you know that I'm not. It's you, we've got. I suppose we've got to choose our our words equally as carefully and and say, uh, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt and say. Just be a little bit more careful when you're writing copy. I'm guessing it's actually rule eight. It's actually rule eight. Is Sorry, mate. Rule, rule eight. Rule eight is tell the truth or at least don't lie. Yeah. Nine. Assume that the person you are listening to might know something you don't. And yeah. ten. Be precise in your speech. There are three. Absolutely. Three of the and that, and that, and rules for life. I suppose in this day and age, you know, once upon a time we would have gone to a um, a marketing agency to do all this sort of stuff but because it's so easy for an individual to do or a company to do it's quite easy to put out marketing material yourself you know we um you know we, it's it's just obviously it's cheaper and easier but um you know they do know what they're talking about and i think sometimes we do have to be you know carlsberg uh, probably the best lager in the world um th th yeah that's a, that's the most famous sort of uh, sort of great slogan, isn't it? claim ever isn't it you know you know the, they can never get in trouble with that you know but no. but just be careful with with how you market stuff and um i think are, I, I think how, how how you do anything is how you do everything isn't it so yeah, how you do yeah. anything is how you do everything and i think i think i think my advice is if you're going to bullshit on your marketing you're doing your, yourself a disservice because you can lose your reputation that's the yeah. problem. Like some of these training providers, like I will, you know, I will keep an eye on who who's up and coming in the industry and, you know, who I believe are, are good, good, are good providers. And, you know, not everyone comes and uses us. Sometimes, you know, it might be like, well, who's good locally to me, for example. And, you know, I can't, I can't recommend someone who BS is on their market. Yeah, no. That's, and, and as trainers as well, I mean, take it into the training world. Um, you know, trainers are quite often readily they're 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 ready to give you their opinions, but but they must make it clear this is this is an opinion, not not fact. Um, even if they believe it to be fact, because it it probably isn't. And you know, maybe sometimes um, people might think on coming on a training course with me that you know might obviously you know experience knowledgeable, of course, um, <laughs> but. You know, maybe I've asked I've asked him a question, but he was a bit vague with the answer. Well, if I'm vague with the answer, it's because the law's vague, and I, sometimes we have to, you know, we have to go with. Well, I can't really tell you for sure, for you know, absolutely black and white here. And they're thinking, well, you're a trainer, you should know this. You should know the answer to this question. It's not not knowing the answer to the question. I don't know the answer to the outcome. Uh, I don't know the outcome because I'm not a judge and I'm not a traffic commissioner. 
Um, so, you know, mm. only th they can make those decisions. So by making claims in those people's names um, mm -hmm. is, is not right. You know, it's not right. Traffic Commissioner recommended. I can't remember I saw that. But I did see that somewhere as well. Um, and, and now we've started a little bit of a phase for doing this. I am particularly now on the lookout. I'm not I'm not going to pretend to be the arbiter of all things on social media in our industry. But, you know, I just it's just it does, as you say, it grinds my gears. And, and I know it does you as well, Pete, because we, we, we try to do things differently. And maybe commercially, that's not maybe an advert that we put out won't be as successful as an advert somebody claiming to be DBSA compliant will put out uh, because people just read DBSA compliant. Oh, I'll go with them people because, you know, the DBSA have kind of like put them on this pedestal, you know, and um, it's just, it may be not commercially the right thing to do, but I think morally it's the right thing to do, isn't it? And the thing is, even as you say DBSA compliant, I'm like, in my my the little man in my head, the little angry man that I've got in my head goes, "What did that even fucking mean? Was it even, even mean yeah. anything? What does it even mean? D How is something DVSA yeah. compliant? Yeah. I'll tell you, oh, what I'll, bullshit! What utter bullshit! In in a, in another life, I had um, I I went to audit a, an operator, and they had this machinery that they carried on the back of their truck, and the way they carried this machinery was. Um, by basically a, uh, a a single or a couple, I, might, I can't remember now, but a couple of straps across, but um, across the base of the of, of the, the machinery. So, um, and I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, to me that's not secure. That's not secure. There is that 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 machinery is capable of independent movement uh, because it's not really secured in the right. It was to, the, the the straps to go across the bottom too low there wasn't enough you know and anyway so i i made that point i said in my opinion you know in my opinion i'm not, not devious but in my opinion that 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 is an insecure way of, of securing those loads anyway the guy got very animated and he went and fetched his managing director the managing director came out and he was very animated as well and says you're an idiot um you know uh, you don't know what you're talking about blah 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 and i said well yeah, okay look look you know why do you think i'm I'm wrong in what I'm thinking. I'm not saying I'm right, but why do you think I'm wrong? And he said, because the DVSA, well, Vosa, it was Vosa back in the day, but the very oh, Vosa, 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 say. Vosa, he said, Vosa have approved the way we load these vehicles. So I'm got my, my mind's ticking and I'm thinking, what, you know, I said, look, can I, can I just take that one step further? I said, Vosa have approved the way you, so, in my mind, I'm thinking somehow they've gone to this department of VOSA that doesn't exist and said, could you look at this load, please? And could you give us a nice certificate to say that this is correct? So when we got to the truth of it, that uh, a vehicle had been stopped at some point in the past and the VOSA bloke didn't say anything about how it was loaded. Oh, wow. So then that was, DV that was VOSA approved. Because the officer at the day, on the day, who may not have been, he may have been a vehicle inspector, not a traffic exam. May, may not, oh, sorry, might have been a, a, a traffic exam, not a vehicle inspector. May may not have even looked at the load, but because no. he didn't say he didn't say anything on the day, that company then took that to be VOSA approved. <laughs> it's like now that that is the that is reality creep, isn't it? That is absolutely absolutely. So then. <laughs> Forever and a day, they've been driving around, loading and load. Yeah, I mean, for all I know, they may have been a hundred percent safe and never had a, a, a machine go over or whatever. Absolutely fine, but to to think that that's VOSA approved is is um, yeah. is odd. So just just a quick one on on that actually, and I'm that's not. Um, I'll, I'll be really careful with what what I say here. But one of the things you've said there about just they may never have had uh, an instant or something like that one of the one one of my favorite sayings is the 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 absence of previous accident is no indication for forward accident performance yeah 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 I mean, that, just exactly cause, just because exactly. you've done something that's not terribly death defying a hundred times it doesn't mean 101 times you're not gonna yeah, die and, and 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 you know with our health and safety hat on um the, one of the things that really 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 bugs me is when you walk into a factory an office or somewhere and it says um 347 days since we've had an injury accident here 
And, and then the following day, there's the world's biggest disaster. You know, it, it doesn't make no difference. It doesn't mean that that I'm walking yeah. into a factory now that hasn't had an injury for 346 days. Oh, this will be a really safe thing I'm going to do then. Won't absolutely not, you know. And no, until it happens, it, it, it happens, doesn't it? But and I know oh. our friends in the health and safety world absolutely um, uh, you know, hate those signs. And um, it means they're not safe. It, yeah, it doesn't mean anything, does it, really? Absolutely, mate. Right then, if you're watching on YouTube, smash the subscribe button. Comment, Mommy. like, smash the subscribe button. And if you're listening on your podcast, make sure you subscribe too. Leave us a five-star review. We'd love that too, because that helps yeah. other people find us too. Yeah. Uh, Mike, it's been a pleasure, mate, and we'll see everyone on the next one. Thank you. Brilliant. See you all on the next one. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.